Hello all. I'm going to speak a little bit louder than usual because there's some noise in the other room. I want to talk about relativity today. Um, it's something uh, that's very fundamental to color. It's the basic, one of the most basic laws in color, and it just states that a color appears a certain way dependent on the environment that it's surrounded by. So if we look at something like that, that's three different reds on a white background. And generally, if I asked you in a class what those look like, you all would say red, you know? <laughs> That's pretty traditional. If I show you those same three reds uh, on a red background, you might say something differently. And I don't know if you can see all of these. There's one here, one here, and one here. Pretty sure you can see this one is the most like the background color, right? So it almost disappears. That's what we'd call a pretty close harmony. If we look at the other ones, there's some significant differences. Now, if you look, if I take this patch and put it here, this is the same color. This color is this color. Okay, so these two are the same, and these two are the same. So if you look here, they feel more red than anything else. When you look here, they start to look very different. This one, uh, well, you say it at home. <laughs> I'll let it be a mystery. But this one looks a little blank. I'd say, which hue do you see here? And what... Uh, do you notice about this one? It might not be just hue, but you might notice something else. Uh, I'll give you a hint. It's about value. Okay? So, if you notice, what's happening is, here you see the mass tone of a color. What we refer to as mass tone, and let me just look around. Mass tone, hold on, is the, what we call a color like red. And then basically the undertone would be what's inside that red. So this red was more of a red-violet. This red is a little more orangey, and it also is a little bit lighter. This is a little darker. All of that becomes more evident when it's put on red because the law of relativity says, and you'll find this in your fact pack under relativity, it says that the ground, which is this larger area, subtracts from the figures, which are the smaller areas. It subtracts from the figure, meaning that it's subtracting the basic notion of red here. Another way uh, you can think about it is if you notice something in one of these colors, like in this case you notice this is light, very light, right? This is the same color. Here it appears darker, right? So what I could do is say here if I see it looks darker, so to get rid of that I put it on a darker ground and then it appears lighter. It gets subtracts the darkness out. You see what I mean? This subtracts the darkness, leaving light behind. Or in this case, this appears darker, or here it appears light, and if I put it on a lighter ground, right, if I see light, I put it on light, and therefore I get the opposite. I see darkness. So whatever you notice in it, you can put it on that type of ground, and it will get rid of what you notice. It will take what you notice away. I'll say that one more time because it might seem a little strange, but this appears light, so if I want to get rid of that quality, I put it on a light ground and it looks darker, okay? So that is the basic notion of relativity. Now what we're going to do is look at a couple other notions of relativity which are more isolated. Take something like this. Watch this. These are uh, two little squares that are identical and two little squares that are identical. What I'm going to do is take two of those, a light and a dark, and put them on these squares. Now, a lot of this might be difficult to see in a camera at home on a recording because in color relativity, for it to, to actually, uh, the phenomena to actually occur, you need to have a very large ground and a very small figure. If you have a big figure on a big ground, it doesn't work nearly as well. So what we're looking at, you might notice, is that these two figures look significantly different, right? This little one, and if I grab the original colors, this is the original color of that, that one right there, okay? Looks kind of like a tan, and you might want to try these at home right along with me, so try to find this color, tan, in your color aid pack. Find that green, and this is sort of, uh, in reality, it's not so purpley. It looks more like a dusty pink, kind of a red, with a little bit of gray in it, okay? You want something that's pretty close in value. This is a little lighter, obviously. This is darker. But if you look at the two, what you'll notice is I'm creating more of a, of what we call a, a hue shift. This is green. 
the background, so it makes this color appear the opposite, which is red. This is reddish, and so this is appearing a little green. This is also a red-violet, so you'll notice this has a little green and a little yellow. Kind of turns just the opposite. Okay, over here you'll notice it's harder to see the difference, especially on the camera. They look very similar. So there will be some colors that tend to accept the influence of the surrounding environment and some colors that resist it. Uh, they tend to exert more of their own uh, nature. This is a great example right here. If I take orange, a very bright orange, and put it on here, it kind of remains orange everywhere I put it. Even though you can see it changes, it still looks orange more than anything else. So sometimes a neutral color like this actually shows a greater difference because neutrals are so complex that they tend to change and shift depending on where they end up going or on what ground they appear on. Now, as I said, one more time, this is, these two are a hue shift. So your two hues are different, your values are similar, and your chromas are similar, although they're a little bit different. Another example would be this. This is a value, a value shift. You have the same hue, but two different values, one lighter, one darker. And if you look here, you'll see that one is getting a lot lighter, one is getting significantly darker, and then here the same thing. So this is on a dark ground. It subtracts darkness. The law, if you want to write it down, which is also on your sheet, is the ground subtracts from the figure. The ground subtracts from the figure. Subtracts darkness, leaving light behind. In this case, the ground subtracts from the figure, so it's light, and therefore they appear a little darker than they do compared to over here. You also will notice this is kind of violet. This is also a violet. It appears a little more brown in the camera, but it is violet. The two violets will subtract violet, making this color, which was the original over there, appear a little more yellow. Again, the opposite. So that, if you... If you think of it, let's pause for a minute again, and the other, the, the ground subtraction, the figure could be interpreted another way. If you notice a quality, like this appears kind of dark here, right? So I could put it on a dark ground, and then it would appear lighter. So it takes that quality out. So whenever you notice a quality, if I noticed light, I could put it on dark and it would appear lighter. If I noticed green, I could put it on a green background, and it would appear less green. See? It all of a sudden appears kind of reddish. So it's the opposite comes in every time. Every time I see a quality, I put it underneath and it disappears and leaves the opposite quality in the figure. Okay? I know you're going to have to review this a few times because it's a pretty complex um, theory. All right? But I think you'll also get it. I think that it's, not, it's not that complex. <laughs> and then the last one to work with would be something we call more of a chroma situation, right? Here we have three colors, these three here, right? These two are from this figure, this, this ground. I'm going to take this ground out. This will be our figure. We have a dull and a bright ground, and I'm going to put our little patches on them, and you'll notice something happens. On the dull ground, it looks bright, and on the bright ground, it looks dull. This is this color right here is our figure color, right? See how it significantly changes? And what will help in general is if you look, if you look at a, a spot in between the two colors, rather than staring at the figures, stare at the space in between generally and make that space rather tidy and tiny and stare here, and all of a sudden you'll notice peripherally in your vision that this is very purpley and bright, and this is quite dull. Now you're going to want to, again, do all of these at home, and the homework might be, where it says relativity on the homework, it might be a little more confusing. You can just follow along with what I'm doing here and do some of these experiments. Um, it's for your reference. Uh, 